Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Let's do some minis. DIY number one, a haunted graveyard. This is a semi mini <laughs> and we are using everything under the sun here. Now this little fence I got from Dollar General and I needed to cut it in half. Easier said than done. Dang, it was like, took all my muscles to get this cut in half. So once it was done, I went and got some Minwax and Walnut, and I gave the fence a nice stain. Then I came back in and patted the extra stain off. Now I had this, this is a Dollar Tree mirror minus the mirror. I used the mirror for a different project. And it's just a white plastic frame, which does not take acrylic paint whatsoever. I don't know what I was thinking, use chalk paint. And then I had a spooky house from the Dollar Tree. I painted that black as well. I will list everything I used. Um, it's It was kind of hard to show everything, but this is a bench that I got. It's the fairy gardens, and here's more fairy garden things that Dollar Tree sell, sold over the summer. Um, when I see things that I know I'll probably use for Halloween, I grab it all year round. Now these tags I got off Amazon, I do have them linked below if you would like. It's 100 tags and they're pretty affordable. I love, love, love this kind of, what is it? Oh, spider web like cloth. It's not really cloth, I can't think, it'll come to me anyway. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love this. And it's perfect for the windows of my spooky house. You just cut it down to size, throw it on there, and then tap around the edges so it sticks to the hot glue. For the top three windows, I went with the kind of silvery spider web, and the next two windows, I used the purple spider web. So cute. Then I ended up putting some of the silver spider web in the door as well. It's mesh cloth. I knew it would come to me. <laughs> What's neat about this is you can put a candle behind this, like a battery operated candle. Don't want to catch this on fire. And it will illuminate these windows and it will really show the web, which is neat. Because I did not add lights to my creepy graveyard, um, I wasn't quite sure how. Now, taking one of these tags that I have painted black, I cut it down to size, and I hot glued that open so that it would look like there was a door open to the haunted house. And like I said, I just cut it down to size, and I use hot glue, and I glued it to where the door would be open and then after that I took some black paint and I painted over the hot glue so that you wouldn't see it. I just thought that was gave it kind of a scary effect like oh look the haunted house's door is open maybe we should go see what's inside. <laughs> um, but yeah once you secure it with your hot glue all you have to do is take a little bit of black paint and paint right over that hot glue so cute oh my gosh i love this little house i love the spider web in the windows so now we're going to get started on the base i used two jenga blocks and i hot glued them to one of the sides on the bottom of the mirror and that's going to help hold the haunted house. The haunted house is on a base, so it is a little bit wider. And then I thought this would secure it more. I didn't want it sitting inside of the mirror frame. I wanted it up. So this worked perfectly. So I took my haunted house and I added that to the Jenga blocks that I had glued down. And I just took some black paint and I painted the part of the Jenga block that you would be able to see now. Bear with me through this video, please, because I'm doing my best to show you, but I couldn't get the camera angle perfect at all the times where you could see, but I did my best. So the fence. I wanted the fence inside 
and on the octagon frame because I wanted it to be not as tall as the house. <laughs> and so I took each side of the fence and I glued it inside of the frame um, on either side of our haunted house. And now we're going to just start putting our little graveyard together. First, I thought I wasn't going to have to paint the inside and then realized that it was probably going to show through the reindeer moss. So I opted to just grab some paint and paint the inside black as well, just in case you could see it coming through. So then I added hot glue to the base and took some reindeer moss and just started hot gluing it down. Um, I didn't do total full coverage since I had painted it black, um, but I just wanted the illusion of grass. And then I started putting the decor that I had painted. I started with the bench. I added that to the side by the fence. And then I came in and added the little fairy garden. Um, I think that was like a bird bath. I added those pieces as well. I put the bird bath next to the fence. And I think I put another piece in front of the haunted house. I grabbed the tags, the three remaining tags. Are, I have four, but I'm using three right now. <laughs> And I'm making gravestones. And I put Ben Dead on one of them. I put Frank E. Stein on one of them. And just to be funny, I put Gone Fishing on the other one. <laughs> and then I used hot glue and I put the gravestones in place next to the other fence. Some of them I hot glued on the bottom and the top and had it leaning against the fence. And the other two I think I just hot glued um in front of that to make a graveyard oh i did add the little crafter square blocks that you can get to the back of them the ones that weren't leaning up against the fence so that they would stand up straight and there's our little graveyard by the fence so i have this play-doh that i bought in black and originally i was gonna roll it into circles and pebbles and make like a cobblestone walkway and I didn't think all of that would attach to the reindeer moss so I just opted to roll out one big strip of it and put that down as the walkway. Um, I did secure it with a little bit of hot glue and I was hoping that overnight maybe it would harden just a little bit. So then I came back in with the existing fairy decor that I had painted and added that to the graveyard as well. So much fun. I love thinking outside the box and using what I have on hand just to come up with different ideas and use them in different ways. And that's what this piece is all about. And the final little tag that I had painted, I wrote on there, keep out. And I'm going to hot glue that to the fence over where I have the bench. Um, I wish I would have painted one more tag and put cemetery or graveyard on it to put on the other fence. Um, but I didn't think about that until after the fact. <laughs> so using my silhouette cameo weeding tool, I came in and I just started drawing uh, circles on this just to make it look like a walkway. And then I had some Spanish moss and I thought I would hot glue just a little bit of Spanish moss in front of one of the gravestones to make it look like a freshly dug grave. And that actually worked out really cute. It gave that illusion. Dollar Tree had these skeleton hands and I wish they would have been just a little smaller, but I opted to use it anyway, just for that creepy effect. And I glued one hanging down from the fence and I glued the other one coming out of the door. <laughs> I thought that was really creepy and scary and perfect for a graveyard. Now nobody's gonna wanna go in this house, right? So those two I put there. Dollar Tree also sells these long, just bones. 
And I thought those would be really cute to outline our walkway. They were almost the perfect size. Too big to have coming out of the ground, but just a little too small for my walkway, but it still worked. I hot glued one on one end of it and hot glued the other on the other side of it. And these little details, because everything is so black in this graveyard, these little like embellishments and these little details really pop against the almost all black background. So I grabbed some skeleton garland. I had used two of the guys in a previous project and I cut the hanger off of his head. I kind of tried to maneuver him to sit. Um, got his legs kind of tucked in under the reindeer moss and all I had to do was hot glue his head to the back to put him in place. And he is sitting on the bench. Then I took another skeleton guy and I mutilated him. <laughs> I ripped his poor little hand off and his foot off and took his head off as well. <laughs> and his feet, one of his feet and one of his hands is sticking out of the freshly dug grave and his head is sitting next to it. And like I said, these little embellishments really pop. I had some white spooky cloth and I thought that would be perfect to tie this all in together because I didn't have any spider web. <laughs> and I just maneuvered some white creepy cloth around the fence, the house, and the other fence to give it that spooky kind of cobwebby look. And there it is, my semi mini graveyard. DIY number two and my favorite craft of this whole spooktacular series, the mini fireplace. This was my inspiration. I saw this picture on Google Images and I fell in love with this fireplace and I had to make a mini version. So using a tray, wooden tray from Dollar Tree, and a ruler, one of the rulers that comes to in a pack at Dollar Tree. I used the tray and measured um, where to cut my ruler. Um, you see me draw a line and then move it over because I want the mantle just a little bit longer than the tray. Now this is so stinking cute, guys. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is my favorite. I use my little miter tool to cut the ruler and the ruler has a lip on it so this was perfect for attaching it to this tray so I used that lip and I added some wood glue and some hot glue and then I made sure that each side was hanging off of the tray and I glued that to the top right now we're assembling the fireplace so I wanted it to look as realistic as possible using little minis <laughs> that I had. So I grabbed my little mini uh, cubes and we're going to do the embellishments of the fireplace. And I grabbed Jenga blocks as well, but it was just a little too long. So my miter tool actually cut through a Jenga block. That made me happy. <laughs> I didn't have to break out my saw. And I'm going to be putting 
the cubes on either end and the Jenko blocks in between. And that's going to be the side frame for my fireplace. And it's really crazy how much this actually just started looking like a fireplace. I was getting so excited. So I used hot glue and I glued all of those pieces down to the tray. I'm very pleased with the way it's turning out so far. It just needs just a little bit more tweaking. So I thought I would grab a craft stick and just embellish it just a little bit more by adding two craft sticks to the top. I cut the fireplace part of my picture out um, just to kind of eyeball where it was going to be on the fireplace and I cut two craft sticks down to size and just put them coming down underneath the mantle and then I use some Valspar chalk paint in white and painted the whole fireplace. Once it was dry, I used Mod Podge and I Mod Podge just the fireplace. That's the only part of that picture I'm using. Um, that was the only part I knew I couldn't duplicate. <laughs> um, and plus the fireplace was really cool. It had like skeletons in it and stuff. So I thought that was neat for Halloween. So using Mod Podge, I put it down and then I took a baby wipe and just kind of moistened it so I wouldn't have any wrinkles and it worked out perfect. I went in my stash, my Halloween drawer, and I grabbed everything <laughs> um, to embellish this cute fireplace. And all of this stuff came from Dollar Tree. I think all of this was, almost all of it was purchased this year, so Dollar Tree should have it right now. So these are a pack of erasers that you can get. And out of the eraser, I took the pumpkin, I took the owl, and I did take the skeleton head eraser. I opted not to use him um, at the end because he looked like an alien. <laughs> um, I bought a pack of these silver, very sparkly skeleton heads. And then I went in my stash of mini jars and grabbed a bunch of little jars. And I'm going to use all of these to decorate the top of the fireplace. So the jars that have the silver lids, I painted all black, even the lid. The little bitty jars that have the cork lids, I painted the jar black, but not the cork. And then I opted to paint the silver skeleton heads black as well. It just was too much glitter and I think it would have stuck out like a sore thumb. I grabbed a little piece of floral and because I had made such a mess on my hand, I actually could use the paint that was already on my glove just to rub on this floral so that a little bit of the white came out, but it was primarily black. Now, those little corks for the mini bottles, those are gonna duplicate flames like candles. And um, I painted them metallic gold. Um, I just kind of wanted it to look like it was illuminating type. And you'll see it looks a lot better once it all comes together. <laughs> the pumpkin and the little uh, owl eraser, I just highlighted with some black um, on his wings and highlighted the creases of the pumpkin. Now we're going to start assembling the fireplace. So much fun. I took some creepy cloth and put it over the top. And then I started just playing around with how I was going to decorate the fireplace. So the lids, the, um, I'm going, 
the metal lids that came on the wider jars, I'm actually using those as like risers. And right now you see me kind of just like brainstorming how I'm going to set this up and how I want it to look. Some of the little bottles I flipped over and glued together um, to make one big candlestick. And right now I'm just arranging kind of where the white, the black, you know, where I want it. The tops of the lids, most of the tops of the lids I did use as risers. So once I had it all in place, I grabbed my garland, which this garland was a blessing in disguise. Oh my gosh. Um, I keep saying garland, but it's actually necklaces that you can buy at Dollar Tree. So I'm using the black one and it has bones and skeletons on it. And it made the cutest garland for my fireplace. And I use it in another place as well, which you'll see later on in this video. But right now I put the garland in place and then I start gluing all of my little embellishments down. I glued the pumpkin and the skeleton head. One of the bottles um, I glued on the top of one of the bottle lids as a riser, put a floral in it. I used the other lid as another riser to put the owl and another lid as another riser for the skeleton. I took two little bitty baby bottles, put them together and glued that down as a tall, it's gonna be a tall candlestick and then glued one of the other ones down as a smaller candlestick. And look at the garland, how cute is that? They have little bitty skeletons. So on the mini candlestick, I glued a skeleton head down and I had two bottles left over. They were the bigger bottles that had the metal lids. I opted to take those and glue them to each corner of the fireplace. And I had, I think from last year, I had some black feathers and some white feathers left over. I bought these off Amazon, but I cut them down to size and I put feathers in each of the bottles that I had hot glued to the side of the fireplace. And it is coming together. I took my, oh, I went and grabbed in my stash some black beads. I thought it just needed a couple more candlesticks. So I glued two black beads together and made a candlestick out of that. And then I just glued one of them down and made another candlestick. That way I kind of had four different um, heights for my candlesticks. And as you can see, those little corks that I had painted gold are the top of the candle. And I just think it gives the illusion that they're illuminated. <clears throat> I did have some um, hot glue showing, so I just colored it with black paint after to blend it in. Now, I just, after the top came out so cute, I figured the front just needed just a couple extra touches here. And I had more of that necklace left over. So I cut, it ended up being, I think, two bones and a skull. And I framed the fireplace. And I did that on either side. Then I cut off that necklace, just the bones, and put that on the top of the fireplace and on the bottom. Still using that same necklace, I cut off two bones together and I thought that would be cute in the crease of the bottles and I glued those two bones on top of the where the crease is for the bottle. Using the same necklace, that necklace came in handy. I cut four skeleton heads off. And I put those in each corner of the fireplace where the little square blocks were. And I just, I'm so glad I decided to do this because this really just finished this piece off and so stinking cute. 
So out of that necklace, the only thing I had left was two bones. I actually glued those down on top of the mantle next to the skull and the candles at the end. And guys, this is my favorite one so far. I absolutely love this miniature fireplace with all its embellishments. It's so cute and I can't wait to use it with my Halloween decor this year. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I had so much fun today. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell. And if you could even go a step further, start sharing it. If you really would love to show your friends, put it on Facebook or Instagram for me. That would help me out so much. But thank you all for your love and support. I love you guys. I will see you soon with another spooktacular video. Have a blessed and wonderful week, guys. I love ya.